Section 10 of the Book of Enoch, translated by Robert Henry Charles. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Book of the Courses of the Heavenly Luminaries. Chapter 72 through Chapter 82. Chapter 72 The Sun. Chapter 72 The Book of the Courses of the Luminaries of the Heaven. The relations of each, according to their classes, their dominion, and their seasons, according to their names and places of origin, and according to their months, which Uriel, the holy angel who was with me, who is their guide, showed me. And he showed me all their laws exactly as they are, and how it is with regard to all the years of the world, and unto eternity, till the new creation is accomplished, which dureth till eternity. And this is the first law of the luminaries. The luminary, the sun, has its rising in the eastern portals of the heaven, and its setting in the western portals of the heaven. And I saw six portals in which the sun rises, and six portals in which the sun sets, and the moon rises and sets in these portals, and the leaders of the stars and those whom they lead, six in the east and six in the west, and all following each other in accurately corresponding order. Also many windows to the right and left of these portals. And first there goes forth the great luminary named the Sun, and his circumference is like the circumference of the heaven, and he is quite filled with illuminating and heating fire. The chariot on which he ascends, the wind drives, and the sun goes down from the heaven and returns through the north in order to reach the east, and is so guided that he comes to the appropriate literally, that portal, and shines in the face of the heaven. In this way he rises in the first month in the great portal, which is the fourth, those six portals in the cast. And in that fourth portal from which the sun rises in the first month are twelve window openings, from which proceed a flame when they are opened in their season. When the sun rises in the heaven, he comes forth through that fourth portal thirty mornings in succession, and sets accurately in the fourth portal in the west of the heaven. And during this period the day becomes daily longer, and the night nightly shorter to the thirtieth morning. On that day the day is longer than the night by a ninth part, and the day amounts exactly to ten parts, and the night to eight parts. And the sun rises from that fourth portal, and sets in the fourth and returns to the fifth portal of the east thirty mornings, and rises from it and sets in the fifth portal. And then the day becomes longer by two parts and amounts to eleven parts, and the night becomes shorter and amounts to seven parts. And it returns to the east and enters into the sixth portal, and rises and sets in the sixth portal one and thirty mornings on account of its sign. On that day the day becomes longer than the night, and the day becomes double the night, and the day becomes twelve parts, and the night is shortened and becomes six parts. And the sun mounts up to make the day shorter and the night longer, and the sun returns to the east and enters into the sixth portal, and rises from it and sets thirty mornings. And when thirty mornings are accomplished, the day decreases by exactly one part, and becomes eleven parts, and the night seven. And the sun goes forth from that sixth portal in the west, and goes to the east, and rises in the fifth portal for thirty mornings, and sets in the west again in the fifth western portal. On that day, the day decreases by two parts, and amounts to ten parts, and the night to eight parts. And the sun goes forth from that fifth portal, and sets in the fifth portal of the west, and rises in the fourth portal for one and thirty mornings, on account of its sign, and sets in the west. On that day the day is equalized with the night, and becomes of equal length, and the night amounts to nine parts, and the day to nine parts. And the sun rises from that portal and sets in the west, and returns to the east, and rises thirty mornings in the third portal, and sets in the west in the third portal. And on that day the night becomes longer than the day, and night becomes longer than night, and day shorter than day, till the thirtieth morning. And the night amounts exactly to ten parts, and the day to eight parts. 
and the sun rises from that third portal and sets in the third portal in the west and returns to the east and for 30 mornings rises in the second portal in the east and in like manner sets in the second portal in the west of the heaven. And on that day the night amounts to 11 parts and the day to 7 parts. And the sun rises on that day from the second portal and sets in the west in the second portal and returns to the east into the first portal for one and thirty mornings and sets in the first portal in the west of the heaven. And on that day the night becomes longer and amounts to the double of the day. And the night amounts exactly to twelve parts and the day to six. And the sun has therewith traversed the divisions of his orbit and turns again on those divisions of his orbit and enters that portal thirty mornings and sets also in the west opposite to it. And on that night has the night decreased in length by a ninth part and the night has become eleven parts in the day seven parts. And the sun has returned and entered into the second portal in the east and returns on those his divisions of his orbit for thirty mornings rising and setting. And on that day the night decreases in length and the night amounts to ten parts and the day to eight. And on that day the sun rises from that portal and sets in the west and returns to the east and rises in the third portal for one and thirty mornings and sets in the west of the heaven. On that day the night decreases and amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts and the night is equal to the day and the year is exactly as to its days 364. And the length of the day and of the night and the shortness of the day and of the night arise. Through the course of the sun these distinctions are made, literally they are separated. So it comes that its course becomes daily longer and its course nightly shorter. And this is the law and the course of the sun and his return as often as he returns sixty times and rises. In other words, the great luminary which is named the sun forever and ever. And that which thus rises is the great luminary and is so named according to its appearance, according as the Lord commanded. As he rises, so he sets and decreases not and rests not, but runs day and night and his light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon. But as regards size, they are both equal. Chapter 73 And after this law, I saw another law dealing with the smaller luminary which is named the moon. And her circumference is like the circumference of the heaven, and her chariot in which she rides is driven by the wind, and light is given to her in definite measure. And her rising and setting change every month, and her days are like the days of the sun. And when her light is uniform, in other words full, it amounts to the seventh part of the light of the sun. And thus she rises. And her first phase in the east comes forth on the thirtieth morning. And on that day she becomes visible and constitutes for you the first phase of the moon on the thirtieth day together with the sun in the portal where the sun rises. And the one half of her goes forth by a seventh part and her whole circumference is empty without light with the exception of one seventh part of it and the fourteenth part of her light. And when she receives one seventh part of the half of her light her light amounts to one seventh part and the half thereof. And she sets with the sun, and when the sun rises, the moon rises with him, and receives the half of one part of light. And in that night, in the beginning of her morning, in the commencement of the lunar day, the moon sets with the sun, and is invisible that night with the fourteen parts and the half of one of them. And she rises on that day with exactly a seventh part and comes forth and recedes from the rising of the sun, and in her remaining days she becomes bright in the remaining thirteen parts. Chapter 74 And I saw another course, a law for her, and how according to that law she performs her monthly revolution. And all these Uriel, the holy angel who is the leader of them all, showed to me, and their positions, and I wrote down their positions as he showed them to me. And I wrote down their months as they were, and the appearance of their lights, till fifteen days were accomplished. In single seventh parts she accomplishes all her light in the east, 
and in single seventh parts, accomplishes all her darkness in the West. And in certain months she alters her settings, and in certain months she pursues her own peculiar course. In two months the moon sets with the sun, in those two middle portals, the third and the fourth. She goes forth for seven days and turns about and returns again through the portal where the sun rises and accomplishes all her light. And she recedes from the sun and in eight days enters the sixth portal from which the sun goes forth. And when the sun goes forth from the fourth portal, she goes forth seven days until she goes forth from the fifth and turns back again in seven days into the fourth portal and accomplishes all her light. And she recedes and enters into the first portal in eight days, and she returns again in seven days into the fourth portal from which the sun goes forth. Thus I saw their position, how the moon rose and the sun set in those days. And if five years are added together, the sun has an overplus of thirty days. And all the days which accrue to it for one of those five years, when they are full, amount to three hundred and sixty-four days. And the overplus of the sun and of the stars amounts to six days. In five years, six days every year come to thirty days. And the moon falls behind the sun and stars to the number of thirty days. And the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly, so that they do not advance or delay their position by a single day unto eternity, but complete the years with perfect justice in 364 days. In three years there are 1,092 days, and in five years 1,820 days, so that in eight years there are 2,912 days. For the moon alone the days amount in three years to 1,062 days, and in five years she falls fifty days behind. In other words, to the sum of 1,770 there is to be added 1,062 days. And in five years there are 1,770 days, so that for the moon the days in eight years amount to 2,832 days. For in eight years she falls behind to the amount of eighty days. All the days she falls behind in eight years are eighty. And the year is accurately completed in conformity with their world stations and the stations of the sun, which rise from the portals through which it, the sun, rises and sets thirty days. Chapter 75 And the leaders of the heads of the thousands, who are placed over the whole creation, and over all the stars, have also to do with the four intercalary days, being inseparable from their office according to the reckoning of the year, and these render service on the four days which are not reckoned in the reckoning of the year. And owing to them men go wrong therein, for those luminaries truly render service on the world stations, one in the first portal, one in the third portal of the heaven, one in the fourth portal, and one in the sixth portal, and the exactness of the year is accomplished through its separate 364 stations. For the signs and the times and the years and the days, the angel Uriel showed to me, whom the Lord of glory hath set forever over all the luminaries of the heaven, in the heaven and in the world, that they should rule on the face of the heaven and be seen on the earth, and be leaders for the day and the night. In other words, the sun, moon, and stars, and all the ministering creatures which make their revolution in all the chariots of the heaven. In like manner twelve doors Uriel showed me, open in the circumference of the sun's chariot in the heaven, through which the rays of the sun break forth. And from them is warmth diffused over the earth, when they are opened in their appointed seasons. And for the winds and the spirit of the dew, when they are opened, standing open in the heavens at the ends. As for the twelve portals in the heaven, at the ends of the earth, out of which go forth the sun, moon, and stars, and all the works of heaven in the east and in the west. There are many windows open to the left and right of them, and one window at its appointed season produces warmth, corresponding as these do, 
to those doors from which the stars come forth according as he commanded them, and wherein they set corresponding to their number. And I saw chariots in the heaven, running in the world above those portals in which revolve the stars that never set. And one is larger than all the rest, and it is that that makes its course through the entire world. End of section 10 Read by C.J. Plogue Section 11 of the Book of Enoch Translated by Robert Henry Charles This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 76 The Twelve Windows and Their Portals And at the ends of the earth I saw twelve portals open to all the quarters of the heaven, from which the winds go forth and blow over the earth. Three of them are open on the face, in other words, the east of the heavens, and three in the west, and three on the right, in other words, the south of the heaven, and three on the left, in other words, the north. And the three first are those of the east, and three are of the north, and three, after those on the left, of the south, and three of the west. Through four of these come winds of blessing and prosperity, and from those eight come hurtful winds. When they are sent, they bring destruction on all the earth and on the water upon it, and on all who dwell thereon, and on everything which is in the water and on the land. And the first wind from those portals, called the east wind, comes forth through the first portal which is in the east, inclining towards the south. From it come forth desolation, drought, heat, and destruction. And through the second portal in the middle comes what is fitting, and from it there come rain and fruitfulness and prosperity and dew. And through the third portal which lies toward the north come cold and drought. And after these come forth the south winds through three portals. Through the first portal of them inclining to the east comes forth a hot wind. And through the middle portal next to it there come forth fragrant smells and dew and rain and prosperity and health. And through the third portal lying to the west come forth dew and rain, locusts and desolation. And after these the north winds. From the seventh portal in the east come dew and rain, locusts and desolation. And from the middle portal come in a direct direction health and rain and dew and prosperity. And through the third portal in the west come cloud and hoarfrost and snow and rain and dew and locusts. And after these four are the west winds. Through the first portal adjoining the north come forth dew and hoarfrost, and cold and snow and frost. And from the middle portal come forth dew and rain, and prosperity and blessing. And through the last portal which adjoins the south come forth drought and desolation, and burning and destruction. And the twelve portals of the four quarters of the heaven are therewith completed, and all their laws, and all their plagues, and all their benefactions, have I shown to thee, my son Methuselah. Chapter 77 The Four Quarters of the World, the Seven Mountains, the Seven Rivers, and so on. Chapter 77 And the first quarter is called the East, because it is the first, and the second the South, because the Most High will descend there. Yea, there in quite a special sense will he who is blessed for ever descend. And the west quarter is named the diminished, because there all the luminaries of the heaven wane and go down. And the fourth quarter, named the north, is divided into three parts. The first of them is for the dwelling of men, and the second contains seas of water, and the abysses, and forests, and rivers, and darkness and clouds. And the third part contains the garden of righteousness. I saw seven high mountains higher than all the mountains which are on the earth, and thence comes forth hoarfrost, and days, seasons, and years pass away. I saw seven rivers on the earth larger than all the rivers. One of them, coming from the west, pours its waters into the great sea. And these two come from the north to the sea, and pour their waters into the Erythrean Sea in the east. And the remaining four come forth on the side of the north to their own sea, two of them to the Erythrean Sea, and two into the great sea, and discharge themselves there, and some say into the desert. Seven great islands I saw in the sea, and in the mainland. 
two in the mainland and five in the Great Sea. Chapter 77 The Sun and Moon, the Waxing and Waning of the Moon Chapter 77 And the names of the sun are the following. The first, Orjares, and the second, Tomas. And the moon has four names. The first name is Esonja, the second, Ibla, the third, Benase, and the fourth, Irae. These are the two great luminaries. Their circumference is like the circumference of the heaven, and the size of the circumference of both is alike. In the circumference of the sun, there are seven portions of light which are added to it more than to the moon, and in definite measures it is transferred till the seventh portion of the sun is exhausted. And they set and enter the portals of the west and make their revolution by the north, and come forth through the eastern portals on the face of the heaven. And when the moon rises, one fourteenth part appears in the heaven. The light becomes full in her. On the fourteenth day she accomplishes her light. And fifteen parts of light are transferred to her till the fifteenth day when her light is accomplished, according to the sign of the year, and she becomes fifteen parts, and the moon grows by the addition of fourteenth parts. And in her waning the moon decreases on the first day to fourteen parts of her light, on the second to thirteen parts of light, on the third to twelve, on the fourth to eleven, on the fifth to ten, on the sixth to nine, on the seventh to eight, on the eighth to seven, on the ninth to six, on the tenth to five, on the eleventh to four, on the twelfth to three, on the thirteenth to two, on the fourteenth to the half of a seventh, and all her remaining light disappears wholly on the fifteenth. And in certain months, the month has twenty-nine days, and once twenty-eight. And Uriel showed me another law. When the light is transferred to the moon, and on which side it is transferred to her by the sun. During all the period during which the moon is growing in her light, she is transferring it to herself, when the opposite to the sun during the fourteen days, her light is accomplished in the heaven, and when she is illumined throughout, her light is accomplished full in the heaven. And on the first day she is called the new moon, for on that day the light rises upon her. She becomes full moon exactly on the day when the sun sets in the west, and from the east she rises at night, and the moon shines the whole night through till the sun rises over against her, and the moon is seen over against the sun. On the side whence the light of the moon comes forth, there again she wanes till all the light vanishes and all the days of the month are at an end, and her circumference is empty, void of light. And three months she makes of thirty days, and at her time she makes three months of twenty-nine days each, in which she accomplishes her waning in the first period of time, and in the first portal for one hundred and seventy-seven days. And in the time of her going out she appears for three months of thirty days each, and for three months she appears of twenty-nine each. At night she appears like a man for twenty days each time, and by day she appears like the heaven, and there is nothing else in her save her light. Chapter 79-80 to 80. Recapitulation of Several of the Laws Chapter 79 and now, my son, I have shown thee everything, and the law of all the stars of the heaven is completed. And he showed me all the laws of these for every day and for every season of bearing rule, and for every year and for its going forth, and for the order prescribed to it every month and every week. And the waning of the moon which takes place in the sixth portal, for in this sixth portal her light is accomplished, and after that there is the beginning of the waning. And the waning, which takes place in the first portal in its season, till 177 days are accomplished, reckoned, according to weeks, 25 weeks and 2 days. She falls behind the sun and the order of the stars exactly 5 days in the course of one period, and when this place which thou seest has been traversed. Such is the picture and sketch of every luminary, which Uriel the archangel, who is their leader, showed unto me. Chapter 80 And in those days the angel Uriel answered and said to me, Behold, I have shown thee everything, Enoch, 
and I have revealed everything to thee that thou shouldst see this sun and this moon, and the leaders of the stars of the heaven, and all those who turn them, their tasks and times and departures. Chapter 80, verses 2 through 8 Perversion of nature and the heavenly bodies owning to the sin of men. And in the days of the sinners the years shall be shortened, and their seed shall be tardy on their lands and fields, and all things on the earth shall alter, and shall not appear in their time, and the rain shall be kept back, and the heaven shall withhold it. And in those times the fruits of the earth shall be backward, and shall not grow in their time, and the fruits of the trees shall be withheld in their time. And the moon shall alter her order, and not appear at her time. And in those days the sun shall be seen, and he shall journey in the evening, on the extremity of the great chariot in the west, and shall shine more brightly than accords with the order of light. And many chiefs of the stars shall transgress the order prescribed, and these shall alter their orbits and tasks, and not appear at the seasons prescribed to them. And the whole order of the stars shall be concealed from the sinners, and the thoughts of those on the earth shall err concerning them, and they shall be altered from all their ways, yea, they shall err, and take them to be gods. And evil shall be multiplied upon them, and punishment shall come upon them so as to destroy all. Chapter 81 The Heavenly Tablets and the Mission of Enoch Chapter 81 And he said unto me, Observe, Enoch, these heavenly tablets, and read what is written thereon, and mark every individual fact. And I observed the heavenly tablets, and read everything which was written thereon, and understood everything, and read the book of all the deeds of mankind, and of all the children of flesh that shall be upon the earth to the remotest generations. And forthwith I blessed the great Lord, the King of glory, for ever, in that he has made all the works of the world. And I extolled the Lord because of his patience, and blessed him because of the children of men. And after that I said, Blessed is the man who dies in righteousness and goodness, concerning whom there is no book of unrighteousness written, and against whom no day of judgment shall be found. And those seven holy ones brought me and placed me on the earth before the door of my house, and said to me, Declare everything to thy son Methuselah, and show to all thy children that no flesh is righteous in the sight of the Lord, for he is their creator. One year we will leave thee with thy son, till thou givest thy last commands, that thou mayest teach thy children and record it for them, and testify to all thy children. And in the second year they shall take thee from their midst. Let thy heart be strong, for the good shall announce righteousness to the good. The righteous with the righteous shall rejoice, and shall offer congratulation to one another. But the sinners shall die with the sinners, and the apostate go down with the apostate. And those who practice righteousness shall die on account of the deeds of men, and be taken away on account of the doings of the godless. And in those days they ceased to speak to me, and I came to my people blessing the Lord of the world. Chapter 82 Charge given to Enoch, the four intercalary days, the stars which lead the seasons and the months. Chapter 82 And now, my son Methuselah, all these things I am recounting to thee and writing down for thee. And I have revealed to thee everything, and given thee books concerning all these. So preserve, my son Methuselah, the books from thy father's hand, and see that thou deliver them to the generations of the world. I have given wisdom to thee, and to thy children, and thy children that shall be to thee, that they may give it to their children for generations, this wisdom, namely, that passeth their thought. And those who understand it shall not sleep, but shall listen with the ear that they may learn this wisdom, and it shall please those that eat thereof better than good food. Blessed are all the righteous. Blessed are all those who walk in the way of righteousness and sin not as the sinners, in the reckoning of all their days in which the sun traverses the heaven, entering into and departing from the portals for thirty days with the heads of thousands of the order of the stars, together with the four which are intercalated, which divide the four portions of the year, which lead them and enter with them four days. Owing to them, men shall be at fault, and not reckon them in the whole reckoning of the year. Yea, men shall be at fault, 
and not recognize them accurately, for they belong to the reckoning of the year and are truly recorded thereon forever, one in the first portal, and one in the third, and one in the fourth, and one in the sixth, and the year is completed in three hundred and sixty-four days. And the account thereof is accurate, and the recorded reckoning thereof exact. For the luminaries and months and festivals and years and days has Uriel shown and revealed to me, to whom the Lord of the whole creation of the world hath subjected the host of heaven. And he has power over night and day in the heaven to cause the light to give light to men, sun, moon, and stars, and all the powers of the heaven which revolve in their circular chariots. And these are the orders of the stars which set in their places and in their seasons and festivals and months. And these are the names of those who lead them, who watch that they enter at their times, in their orders, in their seasons, in their months, in their periods of dominion, and in their positions. There are four leaders who divide the four parts of the year enter first, and after them the twelve leaders of the orders who divide the months. And for the three hundred and sixty days there are heads over thousands who divide the days, and for the four intercalary days there are the leaders which sunder the four parts of the year. And these heads over thousands are intercalated between leader and leader, each behind a station, but their leaders make the division. And these are the names of the leaders who divide the four parts of the year which are ordained, Milkael, Halemelech, and Melishal, and Nerol. And the names of those who lead them, Adnaral, Yasusael, and Ilomeel. These three follow the leaders of the orders, and there is one that follows the three leaders of the orders, which follow those leaders of stations that divide the four parts of the year. In the beginning of the year, Melkayal rises first and rules who is named Tamanian son, and all the days of his dominion whilst he bears rule are ninety-one days. And these are the signs of the days which are to be seen on earth in the days of his dominion, sweat and heat and calms, and all the trees bear fruit, and leaves are produced on all the trees, and the harvest of wheat and the rose flowers, and all the flowers which come forth in the field, but the trees of the winter season become withered. And these are the names of the leaders which are under them, Berkael, Zalebzel, and another who is added ahead of a thousand, called Hilu Yosef. And the days of the dominion of this leader are at an end. The next leader after him is Helimelech, whom one names the Shining Sun, and all the days of his light are ninety-one days. And these are the signs of his days on the earth, glowing heat and dryness, and the trees ripen their fruits and produce all their fruits ripe and ready, and the sheep pair and become pregnant, and all the fruits of the earth are gathered in, and everything that is in the fields and the wine press, these things take place in the days of his dominion. These are the names and the orders and the leaders of those heads of thousands, Gidaiyal, Kael, and Hael and the name of the head of a thousand which is added to them, Asphael, and the days of his dominion are at an end. End of section 11, read by C.J. Ploke.